the supernatural properties of the mandrake. It was known from uh, the Old Testament, from uh, the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know that Jacob, Leah, and uh, Rachel. We know that uh, Leah was the first wife of Jacob. Jacob, of course, wanted to marry Rachel, but there was a type of a, a intentional mix-up there. And Leah had mandrakes. Rachel wanted Leah's mandrakes. By today's standards, the account of Leah's mandrakes in Genesis chapter 30 is definitely weird. If we were to look at it through the eyes of uh, first and foremost faith, as well as eyes of history and culture, it'll become plain and simple. It, it says, And Reuben went into the days of wheat harvest, found mandrakes in the field, and brought them in, unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray, the of thy son's mandrakes, and she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldst thou uh, take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee in uh, tonight for thy son's mandrakes. So uh, the wheat harvest in Palestine was late spring, roughly May to June, indicating the time of the year here. And Rachel, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Leah's son discovered mandrakes, it's a herbaceous plant giving them to his mother. So we have that since uh, antiquity. So what are these supernatural properties of the mandrakes? For centuries, people considered the mandrake to be a magical plant and attributed supernatural powers to it. They often used it to make all kinds of magic potions such as enforcements, happiness, misery, pain, or love. Prevailing view of the mandrake from antiquity to the present day was that he who would uh, d uh, would decide to sleep near the mandrake root would see such sweet dreams of erotic pleasures that he would prefer never to wake up. Finally, support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And that's why, after all, the phrase, quote, sleeps under the mandrake, end quote, was introduced to characterize those who are under the charm of a dream of life and refuse to gaze at harsh reality. But there are a number of other legends associated with the supernatural properties of this famous and legendary plant. In essence, Mandrake is a small plant whose trunk has, paradoxically, a striking resemblance to the shape of the human body, giving rise to a strange belief which was strongly referred to in medieval times. And according to this belief, man arose from the earth as a giant plant root. The first humans then were huge mandrakes, emerging from the flaming lava of Genesis and belonging to the nature of plants because of their immobility and to human nature because of their intellect. These mandrakes, thanks to some unknown supernatural power, managed to escape the shackles of the immobility of the earth and evolve into the present human race. And those who remained on earth gradually diminished, but retained their supernatural power, which gave them so many magical properties. But also in the Jewish legends, the Old Testament, as we saw, were particularly concerned with the mandrake. According to the traditions of rabbis, the mandrake grew in the earthly paradise. It was less developed than that of Adam and Eve and was placed in the garden by the roots of the tree of good and evil to prevent the mother of the human race from hearing the voice of the scandal-rousing serpent. It should be noted that this plant is an excellent antidote to the bites of and benefits of certain and legend uh, Certainly the legend that uh, accompanies it has something to do with its true quality. After all, even in the Holy Bible, reference to the magical plant, as we said, Rachel, Jacob's wife, who had been barren for many years, asked for a mandrake to be brought to her so that she could have children. Also in the Song of Songs, in the Old Testament, the wife who was leaning on the arms of her lover was looking in the magical garden for the mandrakes, whose intoxicating scent would revive his love. Greek mythology also um, 
makes reference to mandrakes and the fragrance of the sedu seductive scent. Eros was often portrayed by ancient poets as holding a mandrake in his hands, and Kirki mixed it with her magical potions. All these traditions apparently came from the coincidence of the medicinal properties of the plant and from its resemblance to the shape of the human body, as you can see. In the Dark Ages of the Middle Ages, mandrake was called homunculus, meaning little man, and was widely used by the alchemists who inspired, in, who inspired them to treat the, try to create human miniatures. In those gloomy years of darkness, they imagined the mandrake as a kind of a goblin who at night let out tearful sighs and sang melodies of unbearable pain. The unfortunate one was condemned who would dare to uproot him without taking the proper precautions. The magic plant would make him lose his mind or uh, uh, be a, his victim. To remove the mandrake from the, crowd, the ground, a special initiation ceremony was required. Three people had the power to pull the mandrake from the ground, the magician, the magician, and the virgin, but only uh, this only happened in the middle of the night. The mediator, usually a virgin, walked all night with a candle, which uh, would be ext extinguished as soon as reaching the spot where the mandrake had grown. And then she would carve three circles around the mandrake with a sword she had in her left hand, and then uh, cutting a long, long braid of her hair, tying it from one end to the plant, the other to a dog, and then started running away from the area, screaming wildly. The dog, who wanted to follow her, finally uprooted the magical plant, which she carried away with him. The moment the mandrake emerged from the ground, it exploded with a loud voice and woe to those who were nearby. They were doomed to madness. Now, William Shakespeare wrote in his work, you scream like mandrakes when they are uprooted from the earth, while mortals who listen to them go mad. The root of this almighty plant was considered very valuable. There was no bliss in the world that could not afford uh, to his, his possessor. The magicians and witches always had mandrakes with them to increase their magical powers, while the women of the 17th and 18th centuries struggled to secure even a small part of it in order to ex experience the ultimate erotic happiness. And this was published in a Greek article from uh, Na Na Nation, National Ethnos, on uh, November 9th, 1936. And I've translated this for you. I hope you found it interesting. Please leave your comments, and thank you for your support.